before we get into the video, we're actually hosting GoGo.jam. If you're interested, it actually starts on May 23rd. That's in eight days of this video being recorded. All right, now let's talk about Godot's portability. Now, the standard definition of portability when it comes to an app is just being able to run the application in the directory without having to like fully install the application. Because you know, you go install Unity and you're gonna be like, oh shoot, I gotta install onto my drive. Uh, yeah, I can't just run it here. And that's kind of the internet's definition. I could just run Godot right in my flash drive even if I want to. But my definition of portability goes a lot further than that. I believe it's just high optimization and low file size. So side note, also not side note, it's actually gonna play a role into the video later on, but we're, we're just gonna get into it. So Tesla is hiring Godot developers. No, not Unity devs, not Unreal devs, Godot devs. Essentially what the article said is, our UIs are built on TypeScript, React, React Native, D3 scales, WebGL, and the Godot engine. That's crazy. <laughs> Goda is for building games, not really for making applications. So it's kind of crazy that it's being used in Teslas. And the biggest reason why it is, is because it's portable. And the UI system in Goda already works so well compared to other engines that they've decided to adopt it because even though it comes with all these other crap features that they don't really care about, like a 3D renderer and all that stuff they're not gonna use in the UI application, it's so low in file size and so well optimized that like, they're sure, they're like, sure, why not? We can just, we can throw Godot in there because that that works perfectly. I don't, I don't see what, why not do it, you know? The fact that a game engine is being used for UI design and application development is like absolutely crazy. Like usually game engines are too big and come with like too many unnecessary features that it's like, not even worth trying like it's just gonna be bundled with all this other junk and they're like well we might as well just learn how to use a different system to develop for it because it doesn't come with a 3d renderer it doesn't come with all these unnecessary features that a game engine comes with that's gonna slow our application down we might as well just use something else but godot's already so well optimized they are willing to use that program for the ui and application development even though it comes bundled in with those unnecessary features so let's get into why godot is so well optimized and why the file size is like the tiniest thing compared to lots of other software out there. This all comes down to Godot being open source. Since it's open source, it has to try to keep all the source code as clean and user friendly as possible. That way c contributors can actually read the code easier and it just makes everything easier for everyone. Many game engines, not just game engines though, other software in general, just like everything that are closed source, usually they don't really care much about what the source code looks like. They're like, hey, we got the feature in, it works, why would I care to make it like run better, you know? Like, uh, we're trying to get features in as quickly as possible. We're trying to get a lot of people hooked onto these features because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for features. They're not looking for like a really well optimized thing. That's not the first thing on their mind. They're looking for features. That's the number one thing. So we haven't gotten to the root of the issue yet. Why closed source is so much more or less optimized and so much bigger than open source because like, sure, they'll be less optimized if I write worse code, but like that doesn't explain the file size. Why is the file size of this like way bigger than Godot, you know? And this this comes down to libraries. So libraries basically just refer to collections of computer software and resources that essentially just contain features that you wouldn't have to reinvent. So for instance, let's say TensorFlow. That's a library. It contains machine learning and neural network tools. I wouldn't want to reprogram all of that because like I, I'm not, I don't have the slightest clue on how to do machine learning and I don't want <laughs> take the six years out of my life just to you know rebuild what they've already built so you just like control c control v there you go you've got a library <laughs> And, that, and it's made to be able to integrate into projects easily like that. So let's say another game engine, for example, Unity. We're just going to use Unity. I have nothing against Unity. I'm just using it as an example. So don't see it as hate, please. <laughs> Unity, for example, wants to use a feature called facial recognition, right? From the TensorFlow library. What the approach of closed source software would be, for example, Unity, would be to download the entire library and use that one facial recognition feature. N n now, that's the entire library. It, the library gets pretty big. Let's just say like it's gonna come bundled with so much other machine learning stuff It might have like road detection algorithms and like sign detection algorithms for like self-driving cars and stuff like that And like different object algorithms that it's gonna have in there And it's like well, you don't need all those extra extra features These closed source software just don't want to deal with having to take apart the library and make sure that we're only using that one piece of it and this is how bloating software comes. Hundreds of unnecessary code 
code in libraries is being unused. And this is not just limited to game engines. This happens everywhere with every type of software. Godot's approach to this library issue is essentially just going to take that one thing that we're going to use, that one piece, that one facial recognition algorithm or whatever we're using in the TensorFlow library, and it's just going to take that and delete everything else that we're not using, right? Now, it's, it's probably not as simple as just deleting. That's... That's obviously why a lot of the companies aren't willing to actually go through and take apart the libraries. But you 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 get you get the general point. If there if that's not possible and you can't take apart the library or there's some issue with copyright and the open source foundation thing, then you're gonna have to reinvent that one feature. That's why like some of the smaller like newest features like ray tracing, for example, like for Nvidia, that's not really gonna come into Godot anytime soon because of the issues with copyright and like getting oh yeah we. Can't can't get the official RTX API into Godot because it's like, well, we require DirectX, but DirectX isn't open source. We only have OpenGL and Vulkan, and that's why Godot also isn't on the HoloLens, is because we we can't take those copyrighted like closed source libraries. We can't just integrate that into the engine. And so then we just have to reinvent the wheel, and that just takes longer. So that was that was my rant about uh portable software. If you're interested in supporting me, I got a Patreon going and it, it's like you get access to the source code of my games, you get access to the source code of my tutorials, you get access to a couple of other things like pixel art, exclusive stuff, you know. So if you feel like supporting me, that would help out a lot. Thanks for watching guys.